everyone, today I want to share all the books that I recently acquired at a library sale. And also are probably the last books that I'm going to share before Christmas because I bought a lot and I, I probably could have restrained myself more at the sale but almost all the books were two dollars so I really couldn't resist especially because these are a lot of books that I have been wanting for a long time and would have otherwise bought new. So I got many books for the price of like three new paperbacks. So pretty excited about that. When I was at the sale I was mostly searching for classics or award winners. So that is most of what I bought and a couple of books that I bought based on name recognition. But most of what I bought were classics so let's just start with those. The first I want to start with is this really hideous copy of Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, now a major motion picture. So this edition came out in the mid 90s and it looks like it was never read, never even opened. The spine is not cracked at all. And it's really sad because there's actually a really touching inscription to my dear sweet sister. Happy birthday, hope you enjoy this. Clearly they didn't even try. I, I would eventually like to get other Jane Austen editions, but I've only ever read Pride and Prejudice, and I think it's a little overzealous to just buy a matching Jane Austen set when I've only read one of her novels, so I want to read more of her stuff before I do that, and so it doesn't really matter if it's ugly or not because I know I won't have it forever, but it's not pretty, it's really not well designed either. The font they chose for all of the page headings is disgusting. It's like one of the worst fonts I've ever seen, but it will do to at least read through once and then I can see if I want to get a better edition or not in the future. A really nice edition that I managed to find was this brand new copy of Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Uh, so new that the gift receipt is still inside and still valid. I could theoretically return this to Barnes & Noble and get money, which is weird. This is a novel that later inspired The Hours. And of course Virginia Woolf is one of the great American novelists that I have yet to read and I really want to. I actually also have a copy of To the Lighthouse but I wanted to read Mrs. Dalloway first for whatever reason. This is a novel about a woman in Mrs. Dalloway and I think it's her process internal and external when planning a party and it's the day of the party. Virginia Woolf could locate the enormous within the everyday and I like the sound of that. I have a couple books from authors that I know very little about other than just basic name recognition but have wanted to read and saw and they were really cheap so I bought them. The first being The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. Edith Wharton is a name that I recognize but I don't know a lot about her life or her works. This is a Pulitzer Prize winning novel of passion and desire in old New York. When the Countess Ellen Olenska returns from Europe, fleeing her brutish husband, her rebellious independence and passionate awareness of life stir the educated sensitivity of Newland Archer, already engaged to be married to her cousin, May Welland, that terrifying product of the social system he belonged to and believed in, the young girl who knew nothing and expected everything. That sounds really good. Rebellious independence and passionate awareness of life sounds like the makings of a great protagonist, so excited about this. Similar vein, author that I've heard of but don't really know what context is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. This is a Victorian novel with gothic themes which I think sounds great for autumn which is sort of the reason why I was thinking about classics in the first place is because autumn is on the horizon and I love reading classics in autumn and winter so I wanted to have more to just pull from and, and I've just been wanting to read more classics in general. So pick this up. It says it ha includes mistaken identities, locked rooms, madness, and romance, a scheming nobleman, a beautiful heiress, and of course the enigmatic woman in white, a mysterious figure confined to an asylum for the insane. I don't know how sensitively this uh, idea of mental illness will be handled, but I'm interested to find out. I mean, honestly, probably not well, but I'm eager to read it anyway, because it is one of those classics that I've just heard about but haven't read which is basically what you could say for the rest of this pile also. For instance, I've been really wanting to read more of the Bronte sisters. I've only ever read Jane Eyre, and I've wanted to read Wuthering Heights for a long time, and I do happen to have it on my shelves. I just haven't gotten to it yet, but I've also been interested in Anne Bronte. The only non Wuthering Heights Jane Eyre Bronte that I found was this, which is Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte, which is a tiny little novel. I think she wrote it before she wrote The Tenant of Wildfell Hall, and it's based on her experience as a governess. It says, undoubtedly a deeply personal novel in which Anne Bronte's views on the contemporary issue of the treatment of governesses find very, finds very deliberate expression. Yeah, eager to read this. The next three have very similar stories. They're all very well-known American 20th century novelists. The first being William Faulkner's Light in August. I've only read one William Faulkner before and it was Sanctuary, which I believe was his most commercially successful novel, but, but not one of his most well-known ones now. This one I think kind of falls in the middle. I don't hear about it all the time, but I had heard of it before. It is a novel about hopeful perseverance in the face of mortality. And yeah, I really wanted to read more Faulkner because Sanctuary was unique to his style, as I've been told. 
in that it was very plot driven and very action packed for a Faulkner novel and most of those other books weren't like that and I think that was why it was so commercially successful is because there was a lot going on and I've wanted to read more since I read that for a class back in college so when I saw this I was eager to pick it up. Same exact story basically for Flannery O'Connor so I read Wise Blood for the same class and have wanted to read more of Flannery O'Connor's works ever since, so I found her complete short stories and e I'm eager to read this, even more so because most of the short stories that I read are from the past 10 years or so, and they're not very old, and so I haven't read a lot of like 20th century modern classic short fiction. So I'm all the more excited to read this for that reason. And then another American classic novelist that I have only read one novel by is John Steinbeck, and this is Cannery Row. I read Of Mice and Men, which I really enjoyed, but it's, you know, quite short, and I've been wanting to read East of Eden for a really long time. It was actually a summer goal of mine to read it, but I don't think it's going to happen before summer's end, considering that summer ends in about 10 days. This is a lot less intimidating in terms of size, and I've heard it's really, really good, so eager to read this. Published in 1945, Cannery Row focuses on the acceptance of life as it is, both the exuberance of community and the loneliness of the individual. Drawing on his memories from the real inhabitants of Monterey, California, Steinbeck interweaves the stories of Doc, Henry, Mac, and his boys, and the other characters in this world where only the fittest survive, to create a novel that is at once one of his most humorous and most poignant works. Just a couple more classics. I bought this mostly because of the edition. It is Cakes and Ale by W. Somerset Mom, and this really cute modern library edition. Um, apparently the Modern Library released a whole set of, of novels in 1950, so that's when this is from, and there were a couple others in the same edition, but I restrained myself and I only bought one, and not for any particular reason, I haven't read any Mom, but this seemed like a decent enough place to start. I'm not basing that on anything, I know almost nothing about Mom and his writings, but this is gonna be my first, I guess. It's really short, it's really cute. It's in really good condition, it smells really good like old books do. I recently have been talking about poetry and how most of the poetry I've read this year so far is in the Tumblr poetry kind of vein, and that poetry doesn't really speak to me very much. More like 20th century poetry works for me, but I haven't read very much of it, so I was really excited to see this collected poems of Emily Dickinson. I have read a couple of Dickinson poems, not very many, but I really enjoyed what I have read, so I hope to just kind of pick my way through this. Obviously I'm not just going to sit down and read the whole book at once, but it'd be nice to be able to leaf through over the next few months because I know that I like Emily Dickinson and hopefully it'll be a gateway to mo more poetry that actually speaks to me. And then last but not least, this is what I consider to be one of my luckiest finds. It is Middlemarch by George Eliot in this really beautiful Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition and it looks like it has really never been read. Um, the spine is broken at like the third waypoint, but it's really clear that they didn't get all the way through, which is nice for me because the book is in really good shape. And again, it was two dollars. I haven't read any of George Eliot's works, and Middlemarch may or may not be the best place to start, but it definitely is her most well-known novel, and I've heard a lot about it. I'm willing to just kind of dive in. I, I'm, this I think would be a really great one for like the dead of winter when I'm not really going anywhere or doing anything, and I can devote a lot of time to just really digging into this. So very excited for this and really, really excited for the edition. French Labs, Deckled Edges, all the good stuff. Now on to the non-classics. The first being How to Paint a Dead Man by Sarah Hall. In my Powell's Hall from a couple of weeks ago, I got The Wolf Border by Sarah Hall, and I have yet to read that, so I haven't actually read any of her works yet, but I'm really convinced for pretty much no reason that I'm going to really like her. I've heard really good things about her most recent short story collection, and she seems like an author that really could be for me. I just wanted to pick this up because it was so affordable, and hopefully I will really enjoy her stuff. This doesn't really say what it is about on the back. It says, the lives of four individuals, a dying painter, a blind girl, a landscape artist, and an art curator intertwine across nearly five decades in this luminous and searching novel of extraordinary power. That's all it says about the plot, so I don't really know what it's about, but I'm eager to get to it all the same. Next is The Shipping News by Annie Prue. I got this first of all because it won the Pulitzer Prize, but secondly because she also wrote Barkskins, which was nominated for the Baileys, I think, either this year or last year. I can't remember. I contemplated picking that up when I was in London, but it was really massive, like over 500 pages. So this seems a little more accessible, and again, it won the National Book Award, 
and the Pulitzer Prize, so I think that this will be a really good one. It says, at 36, a third-rate newspaperman is wrenched violently out of his work workaday life when his two-timing wife meets her just desserts. He retreats with his two daughters to his ancestral home on the starkly beautiful Newfoundland coast, where a rich cast of local characters all play a part in Quayle's struggle to reclaim his life. It says it's vigorous, starkly comic, and at times a magical portrait of the contemporary American family. That all sounds really good to me, so excited about this one. This was totally a cover buy, which I usually don't do, but my excuse was it's two dollars, so I felt like it was justified. It's called The Silver Bow by Lisa Tuttle. Um, it is a fantasy novel with a George R.R. Martin blurb on the front and a Neil Gaiman blurb on the back, so I felt like that was encouraging, and again, it's stunning. And it was a UK edition, so I didn't know if I'd ever really be able to get it again. It says, Appleton is a small town nestled on the coast of Scotland. Though it was once famous for the apples it produced, these days it's a shadow of its former self. But in a hidden orchard, a golden apple dangles from a silver bough, an apple believed to be lost forever. That's not really a plot. Another book I bought, basically because it's an award winner, is Let the Great World Spin by Colin McCann. It won the National Book Award. In the dawning light of a late summer morning, the people of Lower Manhattan stand hushed, staring up in disbelief at the Twin Towers. It is not. It is August 1974, and a mysterious tightrope walker is running, dancing, leaping between the towers, suspended a quarter mile above ground. In the streets below, a slew of ordinary lives become extraordinary in the best-selling novelist Colin McCann's stunning portrait of a city and its people, connected in ways they don't yet even know. It's a New York City novel. I tend to like those, so I'm excited about this. A couple of years ago, I listened to the audiobook version of Without You There Is No Us by Suki Kim, which is a memoir of her time teaching North Koreans elite boys. She's also a novelist, and I've been wanting to read one of her novels ever since I read that memoir, and so when I saw this I couldn't say no to it. It is The Interpreter by Suki Kim. Susie Park is a 29-year-old Korean-American interpreter for the New York City court system who makes a startling and ominous discovery about her family history that will send her on a chilling quest. Five years prior, her parents were brutally murdered in an apparent robbery of their store, but the glint of a new lead entices Susie into the dangerous Korean underworld and ultimately reveals the mystery of her parents' homicide. So it sounds almost like a thriller, which is honestly not what I would have expected from Suki Kim, but I'm still eager for it all the same, and I hope this is really good. Uh, I also picked up a Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier. I haven't ever read any Tracy Chevalier, but I really love historical fiction, and I think that this will be a great one. It's a work of historical fiction about the girl with the pearl earring and the circumstances behind the painting and why maybe it was painted and who was in the painting. So it takes place in the Netherlands in the 1600s. I've never read anything in that kind of time or place, so I hope that this is a good one and I've heard great things about Tracy Chevalier, so hopefully she is for me. Another work of historical fiction, this one much more intimidating, is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. Being a lover of historical fiction, that's a relatively new discovery for me from the past couple of years or so. Um, I've been told time and again that I should read Hilary Mantel, so I just decided to pick it up. It won the Man Booker Prize. It is the first in a trilogy all about Thomas Cromwell and Henry VIII. This is a period of time that I'm, I'm aware of as like a pop culture reference, but not any of the historical detail. So I'm actually really eager to get to this and hopefully I enjoy it. All right, last couple. First being Delicate Edible Birds by Lauren Groff. I have wanted to read more of Lauren Groff's stuff ever since I read Fates and Furies, which I thoroughly enjoyed. This is a collection of her short stories, sort of a similar addition to Fates and Furies, and this is in perfect condition. Uh, I, I might as well have bought it new, it's so perfect, so I, I really wanted to get to it, and I'm not sure how she will be as a short fiction writer. There's something really singular about Fates and Furies, very unique about it, that I can't picture what her other books would even be like, so I'm really excited to read some more of her stuff. And then the last book is one that I'm very excited for, it's been on my Goodreads TBR for probably four years now, and that is Bastard Out of Carolina by Dorothy Allison. Me, as well as I'm sure many other people, saw Mercedes' review of Bastard Out of Carolina, I think it was in 2013, maybe 2014, and she loved it, raved about it, and a bunch of people read it based on her recommendation, and I really wanted to, have wanted to since then, but just have never bought it. So there were actually surprisingly many copies of this. I'd never seen it in person before, so I was really eager to see a really nice edition available and decided to pick it up. At the heart of this astonishing novel is Ruth Ann Boatwright known simply as Bone, a South Carolina bastard with an annotated birth certificate to tell the tale. Observing everything with the mercilessly keen eye of a child, Bone finds herself caught in a family triangle that will test the loyalty of her mother, Annie. So yeah, just a family drama takes place in the South. 
Uh, I've been wanting to read it for a really long time, very eagerly awaited, and I think that this is definitely going to be a five-star read for me. I really hope that is true, so very excited about this. And that is it. Those are all the books I got at the library sale. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of the books that I mentioned in this video, or ones that I should read sooner rather than later. I'm really excited for the reading seasons to start. Here it's still pretty hot, so it doesn't feel like autumn quite yet, but I'm getting excited for it preemptively because everyone on the internet is excited about fall, so I am on the bandwagon. I'm really excited about it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time.